the factor which decide how much water gets out of the vessel into the interstitium and then how much water comes back. Remember the hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure. The oncotic pressure is the pressure on the water exerted by the proteins right and the hydrostatic pressure is the pressure exerted on a, on a fluid present in a pipe due to the diameter and, the, and, and those things. So, the oncotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure. These are the factors which define how much fluid would stay in the vessel and how much would go out in the interstitium. So, when you have edema, edema would mean we will talk more about it, edema would mean there is more fluid either in the, in the interstitium or the cells have swollen up and they have gotten more fluid in them. Anyways, the tissue is swollen up. So, whenever you have edema, the fluid has moved out of the vascular system into the interstitium or out of the vascular system into the interstitium and into the cell and you have to understand why that happened. There are two basic factors. You have oncotic pressure of the proteins and you have the hydrostatic pressure. So, you should immediately as a doctor, as a student you should say okay the person has edema, what happened to his hydrostatic pressure. So, then you should see all those factors which contribute to the hydrostatic pressure and you should say okay, what happened to his oncotic pressure and you should see all those factors which contribute to the protein. For example, liver cirrhosis, reduce amount of proteins manufactured, reduce amount of proteins present in the intravascular system, less protein in the intravascular system, less oncotic pressure, what would happen? The water will become a very sad guy and say okay, fine, I have less protein, I was a happy water, but I think I cannot live here anymore because I was holding on to my dear friend proteins, they are not there anymore, I am going to move out. So, the water is going to move out in the interstitium, right. Or think about this, somehow due to hypoxia or other uh, cellular membrane injury or some toxic poisons which cause a sodium potassium pump to reduce functioning. What will happen? Sodium would move into the cell and remember sodium always, so sodium always, so this is that is a sodium, sodium always have water with him as a friend. So, water is here, sodium is here, when the sodium moves in it takes water with him. So, what happens the cell would start swelling up, sodium potassium pump is not working, it is not throwing the sodium back out and so the sodium is going to stay in and the water is going to stay in, the cell is going to swell up. So, what happens is um, again we will do edema as a separate topic, but just very quickly remember the uh, pitting edema versus non pitting edema. If the sodium potassium pump is not working correctly, if sodium is going inside the cells and cells are swelling up, then if you press on that tissue, it is a cell which is swollen up, water cannot just squish out and squish back in or cannot just squeeze out and in. So, the edema would stay, the tissue swelling would stay. So, that is called non pitting edema. Non pitting edema actually means either the cells are swollen or the edema is present in the interstitial space, but it is fib fibrosed there is fibrosis which has occurred. So, non pitting edema usually means that we have um, um, swollen cells. On the other hand pitting edema that means what? When the fluid has moved from the intravascular systems abnormally into the interstitial system and interstitial system is not able to handle that fluid, there is so much of the fluid that lymphatics cannot take it back and the fluid cannot move back in the vascular system. Why? because either the hydrostatic pressure got altered or the oncotic pressure got altered. If in this case, if you press on this tissue, the fluid is going to disperse out and when you remove the pressure, it is going to come back. So, that is a pitting edema. So, we will talk more about that at a later time, but the driver, the driver I am saying it again and again, do not forget this, the driver to keep the fluid in balance between the intravascular and interstitial are hydrostatic pressure drivers and the oncotic factors. Anything which changes them would cause abnormality of distribution here. On the other hand, what causes the fluid to go in the cell or come out of the cell? Purely ions, purely ions. Do not tell me that hey, we would have the oncotic pressure which would cause the blood cell, the, the fluid to go inside the cell or do not tell me the hydrostatic pressure is causing that. 
the factor which regulate the amount of fluid present inside the cell are purely ionic concentrations. So, these two are very very important factors to understand all right. So, now uh, we will close here in our next chapter in our next lecture we will talk about osmosis and osmotic pressures. Thank you bye. Guys thank you very much for watching this video make sure that you like and subscribe and if possible share it with your friends as well.